da nare talibai ya are wa haus mai alfarwa are wa haus ta taskance ya aiki da talibun ai an ba tambu ma da nare talibai are wa haus mai alfarwa are wa haus ta taskance aiki da talibun an baya Allahi mai iko na dan waki da laba ko gamo ka agaje na sare kin iko kan ta fi in yi ko ba gamo ko mai yawa da girman aiki da ka yi lamuni zai koma hafi ko zai zamo dan sauki na anza da la ko ba gamo ya rambu karbu wannan nan aiki Hey, munga gaman katar da mai ro. Erumbu ma da nare talifai are wa haus mai alfarma are wa haus ta taskance aiki da talifin yan baya. In tsira amanta ka a yarda. Quickly acknowledge some of the guests that are here. But I would like to beg head for the knee. So these names are not arranged in order of protocol. So you please pardon me for that. It is my singular honor and privilege to welcome the Alawi of Ilawi, Oba Alabi Adebanji, the chairman. Council of Obas HD State Kabezi We also like to acknowledge in our midst His Highness the Sheikh of Borno Alaji Dr. Abubakar Umar Garbay CFR Heavily represented by His Highness the Emir of Shani, Alaji Muhammad Nasir. We also have in our midst Dr. Mustafa Inwa, who is the Secretary to the State Government of Kusana State, representing the Governor of Kusana State. Alaji Aminu Bello Masari. Also, we have in our midst Professor Tahiru Jiga, former chairman of INEC. I'm told that uh, the contingent from Ikit State are with us, chiefs, and of course, some of the politicians in the state are also here with us. Professor Abdullahi Abdul Rashid Naala, the VC University of Abuja. Ambassador Ibrahim Mai Sunei, Traikim Badi, Vice Chairman ACF, BOT representing the Chairman ACF, BOT, that's Chief Audi Agbe. Also, the Emir of Biawuri, His Highness, is heavily represented here today by Dr. Yasin Abubakar, Al Haji Mustafa Barikindo Aliu, the Kauran Adamawa, is representing the Lamid of Adamawa, Co Commander Hafiz Mohammed Tarouni, SS1 Sector Commander. RS 1.1 representing the co marshal Barista Mohammed Ubandoma, Aleu, Secretary to the Government of uh, Nasrao State, who is also representing the Executive Governor of uh, Nasrao State, Engineer Abdullahi Sule.
also I would like to acknowledge Dr. Hamid Bopoy, who is the Executive Secretary of UBEC and former Director of Ariwa House. We acknowledge you and welcome you home. Your Excellencies, Right Honorable Yaokubu Dogara, the former Speaker of the Federal House of Representatives, is very much in our midst. One of the guest speakers for today, Professor Suleiman Elias Ogoro, the Executive Secretary Tetpant is already seated and here with us. We'd like to welcome you, sir. Jamir Martin Ariwa is heavily represented. As you rightly know, today being a special day for Ariel House, turning out to 50 years of existence. When you talk about Ariel House, obviously, one must talk about the efforts of the founding fathers of the Ariel House. You will understand very well that here in this hall lived a man who saw it, who took part in it, in the establishment of Ariwa House. Matter of fact, he's the only surviving member of those the six personalities that uh, established Ariwa House. He was former super permanent secretary, very quiet, humble, and presently the chairman governing board of Amadou Bello University. He was a former secretary to the government and head of service. Please welcome the Wazir Mfika, Malam Adam Mfika. Also, GOC Wandi Fadula Dr. Bala Mohammed Tuku representing Professor Adam Ugozo, President and Founder Mariam Abacha America University. You will please forgive me for not uh, taking it accordingly. I told you that the names are coming and as they come so it's that we are acknowledging. Mohammed Sanesidi, former DG okay. hmm. would like to acknowledge your presence. His Highness Alaji Mohammed Nasru Melafia, okay, Sarkin Shani, did say that. Malam Amadu Idris Koya the Director of uh, State Services, Kaduna, Dr. Bello Ali Gusau, Executive Secretary, GDF, the Vice Chancellor of Ahmadu Bello University, Professor Kabir Bala is also here, is the host. Another 
management of uh, Amadebelo University here present, Mr. Moses Ikiriki. He is representing the managing director, Sir Amadebelo Memorial Foundation. Of course, we have former directors of the center, that's Ariwa House. The, the Ariwa House has always been, and inshallah will be the rallying point of all northerners for a better Nigeria. Colonel Aminu Isa Kontogura former military administrator is also is also here with us Colonel Aliu Abdul Honorable Mohammed Tukurbelu are also here with us SSG to the government of Nasara State you're most welcome Comrade Dogo Sherman Honorable Commissioner of Information Culture and Tourism Nasra State. I'm good. Definitely be a landmark in our history as the tradition of Ariwa House always forging ahead in fostering unity in our diversity. In most cases do come from the south and then the guest speaker we domesticated here but you discover that this time around the reverse is the change is this the case as the guest speaker is coming from the south west the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum Dr. Fayemi, an exec and executive governor of Ikiti State. And the executive governor of Ikiti State, distinguished guest, is not here alone. He is being escorted by the uh, it is State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Femini Atue Afwe, members of the Federal House of Representatives from the state, that's Ikiti State. We have Honorable Yemi Adaramodu, Honorable Shola Patoba, and Honorable Peter Owalabi. These are honorable members of the representing Federal House of uh, Representatives who are here with us today. Of course, we have other traditional rulers from each state. We have the Atta of Ayide Ikiti, the Onisha of Ishan Ikiti State, and the Onisha of uh, Isimbode. I hope you'll forgive my pronunciations. And the Alare of Ari Ikiti. These personalities are the guests who have accompanied His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Ikiti State, and the guest speaker. Lumbo ma adanere talivaya 
Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the His Eminence, Your Excellencies. Dana, let me see. Are we set for the national anthem? And our dear governor, His Excellency Madam Ahmed Nasuri Kadifai. His Excellency, the guest speaker, Honorable Minister of Water Resources, Madam Suleiman Adamu. National anthem, please. Shall we please all rise for the national anthem? so much please let's be seated your excellencies the special guest of honor and the president of the federal republic of nigeria gcfr president muhammad buhari aptly represented today by the Honorable Minister of Water Resources, Malam Suleiman Adamu, Your Excellencies, the Nigerian Governors, Chairman Nigerian Governors Forum, and of course the guest speaker and the Executive Governor of Bikiti State. Your Excellencies, the Chairman of this occasion and former Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Mohammed Namadi Sambu, His Excellency the Chief Host, our, our dear Malam. Our Governor, Malam Nasru Ahmed Erufai, other governors here present, in particular, His Excellency Mohammed Abu Bakar Badaru of Jigawa State, Malam His Excellency Abu Bakar Bagudo. His Excellency Aminu Tamwal, Executive Governor of uh, Sokoto State, and representatives of uh, Governor of Katsina State, Dr. Mustafa Enwa, and of course Nasrawa State, other distinguished Nigerians, His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, and other Highnesses, your royal highnesses that are here with us. The chairman, ABU governing board, Malam Adamufika, Wazirin Fika. 
Vice Chancellor Amadou Bello University, Professor Kabir Bala, the GOC One Mechanized Division, Major General U.S. Muhammad, seven and retired military officers, heads of agencies and parasitals, ACF Chairman, Sir Amadou Memorial Foundation, Jamia Matang Ariwa, the Director Ariwa House, and former directors of Ariwa House, Alaji Bashir Tofa and host of elder statesmen that are here, distinguished guests, good morning. In the name of God, the most merciful and compassionate. Today, Your Excellencies, is a day to reckon with in the history of Nigeria. For the area of personalities here today in our midst, it is indeed an honor over and above the ordinary process to have the caliber of Nigerians answering the call of Nigeria. I think before we go further, we need to give ourselves a big round of applause because we are being patriotic. Our coming here today couldn't have come at a better time than now. 50 years down the line, Arewa House has always been and will be, inshallah, at the forefront of keeping Nigeria one. Hence, it has always organized lectures time to time each year to reflect on the circumstances of this country with a view to providing solutions. It is in this regard that today we are gathered here to celebrate the 50 years anniversary. As Nigerians, we know that occasions like this will definitely wish to start by committing ourselves to God. It is my singular honor and privilege to invite the Chief Imam of Sultan Bella Mosque, Sheikh Mohammed Suleiman Adam, to please pray for us. Sheikh Allah Shukam Tumala. So, Kuba Mala Hanya. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Nabi Al-Kareem. Mr. Chairman of the occasion, please. I ask you to pardon me. Let me ask the gathering to remain silent for one, one minute, please, in order to pray for the Nigeria and a special prayer for the Premier of Northern Nigeria, Saamad Bello, sat down of Sabato. Thank you, sir. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد ورحم محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت ورحمت وبارك على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا حلنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا حب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep Nigeria one إن شاء الله تعالى with harmony We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins ونسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يغفر لنا والوالدين ولمن سبقنا بالإيمان سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسبون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين ما شاء الله thank you so much Sheikh equally as been taught by the Sardona looking at the nature of Ariwa may I invite Mr. Moses of the Sir Amadou Bello Foundation, Moses Ikerubi, to please give us the Christian prayer. 
We are in prayer, please. Almighty God, eternal King of glory, we bless your holy name for bringing us together today to mark the 50th anniversary of Arewa House. We thank you for the life of those who have put up this place together for these past 50 years. We thank you for bringing every one of us together to champion for the cause for which this place was established. Father, as we have come today, everything that we are going to do here, we commit it into your hands. Father, we want to use this opportunity to commit our fatherland, Nigeria, into your hands. Father, you are the Prince of Peace. We decree that your peace will reign supreme in this land, Nigeria, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as we have gathered, I commit every activities that will be done here this morning into your able hands. Come and champion it, lead every cause. And at the end of the day, when we take our leave from here, you will lead us to a virus destination. Thank you, Almighty God. Blessed be your holy name, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, Moses. Now that we have prayed, Your Excellencies, the Chairman of this occasion, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce my co MC, Jibrin Goma. My name is Abba Zayang. We shall be working together for the success of this occasion. Before I hand it over to him, I quickly acknowledge the Chairman of ACF, His Excellency Ambassador Shehu Malami. He's here with us. And we like to acknowledge that. Jibril. Thank you, Abba Zayan. Your Excellencies, all other protocols duly and respectably observed. Permit me to invite for an address of welcome by the host, Professor Kapir Bala, Vice Chancellor of the most prestigious university in the African continent, Ahmadi Bello University, Zaria. Professor Sir. The President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, GCF ably represented by the Honorable Minister of Water Resources, Chairman of the Occasion, former Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, <coughs> Architect Mahamodu Namadisambo, this is your hand. Permit me to respect all the protocols, but to quickly add recognition of the Executive Secretary Tertiary Education Fund. Professor Suleiman Elias Bogoro, my colleague Vice Chancellors and distinguished professors. It is my singular honor and privilege on behalf of the Board and Management of Ariwa House, the Center for Historical Documentation and Research, to welcome you to this Golden Jubilee. The Center was established 50 years ago in memory of our beloved first and only Premier of the former Northern Region. Of Nigeria, the late Sir Amadou Bello is a donor of Sokoto. May his soul rest in peace. Area House was conceived in August 1969 as the Northern Nigerian History Project by the then governors of the six northern states under the supervision of ICSA, the Interim Common Services Agency a body that was to oversee the properties and activities of the former Northern Regional Government. In this regard, a committee was officially inaugurated on the 15th of January 1970. We demanded to research in all aspects of the history of Northern Nigeria to procure and preserve records relating to the history of Northern Nigeria and to establish a museum in the official residence of the late Premier of Northern Nigeria. 
after providing the necessary institutional framework, the governors of the then six northern states approved the establishment of a center for historical documentation and research to be housed in the official residence of the late premier with affiliation to Amadou Bello University. The members of the committee included Alhaji Ali Akilo as chairman of blessed memory, Madam Diman Chiroma of blessed memory, Mr. Sunday Aoni of blessed memory, Alhaji Yusuf Gopir, and Madam Adamu Fika, Wazir and Fika, who is probably the only surviving member, may their souls rest in peace, and the current chairman of the governing council of Amadou Bello University area. At the later stage, no? Professor Abdullah Smith, who was then the head of history in Amadou Bello University area, also opted to the committee and appointed the pioneer director of the center and continued to serve in that capacity up to 1980 when he retired from the services of the university. In 1975, Iksa was dissolved and Ariwa House was officially transferred to Amadou Bello University in 1976 as one of its research units. From its establishment in 1970, the house has carried out many scholarly activities. These activities include concerted efforts to create an enabling environment for research the recovery of archival materials and hosting of conferences and seminars. The concerted efforts of Professor Abla Smith have earned the Center International Appeal. Since the early 1970s, scholars in the social sciences and the humanities have been trooping to Area House from all over the world. The 1990s ushered in a milestone in the history of Amara Area House, <coughs> which was repositioned as an international center of excellence when funds realized at the launch remarkably exceeded the projected amount. The center continues to provide scholars and researchers alike with one of the most resourceful library services in the country. It provides medium services and allows Northern States governments to house galleries where each state depicts the unique culture and values of their state. The center is 2000, in 2000 established the Northern Education Research Project and consequently it has successfully organized the Northern Education Summits where all Northern governors were in attendance. The project was to enable to then produce a roadmap that produced that focused sorry, on the following key issues science and technical education, adults and non formal education, <coughs> women and girl child education, and a blueprint on a model Quranic primary school. Area House, with ample support of the Northern States, has also successfully produced and published the following educational materials. Manual on school inspection, manual on school management, improving <coughs> the teaching of primary English, mathematics, and science, improving the teaching of English in junior secondary schools, improving the teaching of mathematics in junior secondary schools, improving the teaching of science in junior secondary schools, and more importantly, a manual on guidance and counseling for secondary schools. All these are geared towards improvement of education in the Northern States. Area House has also partnered with the Bureau for Public Enterprises in 2001 and hosted a conference on the Northern States participation on privatization and economic development of the North. It has also organized with the backing of Northern States Governors Forum Peace Conference in the, in the North. It was the first conference that assembled all well-meaning Northerners and discussed issues that were critical to the peace and stability of the region, which is more desired now ever than more than ever before. In the pursuit of its mandate, Area House initiated annual lecture series in honor of late Sir Amadou Bello in 1994. 
The lecture has served as a political bridge between the North and the South. In most instances, the speaker is sourced from the North and the chairman from the South. From inception to date, 10 speakers have delivered the lecture, starting with late Malam Diman Churuma to Professor Isha Audu, Alajisheo Shagari, General Muhammad Buhari, Chief Sonde Aoni, Alaji MD Yusuf, General Akubu Gowan, Professor E. Abubakar, Professor Anga Abdullahi, and Malam Sanusi Lamiko Sanusi. Another important milestone in the history of Area House in the last 50 years is the support the center received from the American Embassy in Abuja, which led to the convening of two international conferences on the preservation of Arabic Ajami manuscripts. Consequently, the Ford Foundation provided the center with a two-year research grant, which helped the center greatly pursue its mandate. At the International Conference on the Preservation of Ancient Manuscripts in Africa, held in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, between 17th and 19th December 2010, Ariel House was awarded the Africa Honorary Prize in recognition of its exceptional contribution to the conservation <coughs> of African written heritage and culture. It was chosen as the regional center for research and training of African ancient manuscripts preservation project. The major challenge confronting us in this center are inadequate space to accommodate the huge library and archival materials in its possession, and secondly, lack of befitting researchers accommodation for the teaming researchers patronizing the center from all over the world. Thus, the university is making an appeal first to the federal government, states, eminent Nigerians, and international donors to assist the house in this regard. The provision of these facilities will enhance academic activities of the center and will further immortalize the late premier of blessed memory. The center has also initiated an oral documentation unit that will capture the life and times of eminent personalities from diverse spectrum of Nigerian society. The oral data will be preserved for future generation of researchers and it will also serve as inspirational talk to the younger ones who frequent the center on daily basis on educational and excursion visits. <coughs> Our Excellencies, distinguished chairman, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, Permit me at this juncture to express a profound gratitude to many individuals and families who donated their libraries to Ariel House. <coughs> a special mention should be made of late Professor John Levers, Professor Witteka, Dr. Mahmoud Modibotukur, Mala Mahmoud Fufori, Sheikh Ahmad Arabi Joss, and many, many others. I also appealing other eminent personalities to donate their holdings to Ariel House. We also wish to acknowledge the support of the Board of Trustees of ETF then and now TED Fund for constructing the hall we are gathered in here today. This was from TED Fund. <coughs> also grateful to the U.S. Embassy and the Ford Foundation for their support to the Center's Arabic Manuscripts Conservation and Preservation Project. All the achievements of Area House would not have been possible if scholars had not come forward to surrender their personal libraries and donors their funds to the center. In particular, the 19 Northern State governments have been very, very supportive, particularly in the formative years of the center. At this point, let me remind the Northern, 19 Northern States of Northern Nigeria of their commitment as captured in the North Central State Edict Number no. 4 of 1977, in which it was provided that annual grants be made to the Area House Trust, as may be agreed by the Northern State Governors and Court. We appeal that the spirit of the regular grant to the House be revived, sustained, and improved as a statutory commitment of the 19 states and indeed all states of the Federation. Our Excellencies, distinguished 
Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, it is once again my honor and pleasure to welcome you to this August occasion of the Golden Jubilee Anniversary of the Foundation of Ariel House. And lastly, I would like to extend my appreciation to the guest speaker, the Executive Governor of Ekiti State, Dr. Kaede Fahimi, Fahimi, for accepting our invitation to deliver the Golden Jubilee Lecture. And before I finish, Chairman, Excellency, I don't want to fail in something that I do. I always recognize my teachers in gatherings like this. In this regard, I would like to rec recognize Chief Host, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State, Madam Nasser Erufai, who was my teacher. I wish every one of us here a pleasant and memorable occasion. Thank you all for listening. And I wish you all blessings of Allah the Most High. Thank you very much. Please, let's give him another big round of applause. Much as I would like to appeal to the journalists because it appears those at the back of uh, you are not really seeing what is happening. Please, if we can find a way, if you can score in, that this occasion is beamed live in the organizations, in the media organizations as uh, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, Kaduna, Nagarta Radio, TVC, and the channels. This has been being me live. May I, before I invite the chairman for his address, acknowledge the Honorable Minister of Police Affairs, Mohammed Megali Dengadi. You are most welcome, sir. At this point in time, it is my singular honor and privilege to invite the chairman of the occasion, His Excellency Architect Mohammed Namadi Sambo, former Vice President GCON FNIA, to please address the gathering. Before he comes, I understand Alaji Tonkoyaka saying is in our midst. We welcome the elder statesman. Thank you. The former Vice President, Your Excellency, sir. Your Excellency, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Your Excellency, the President and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, ably represented by the Honorable Minister of Water Resources, Engineer Suleiman Adamu. Your Excellency, our Chief Host, and my brother, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State, Malan Nasr Rufai. Your Excellency, our guest speaker, my Good friend, the governor of Ikiti State, Dr. Kayo De Faemi, Your Excellencies, the Executive Governors of Sokoto State, Jigawa State, KB State, and representatives of other governors here present, Your Eminence and our father, the Sultan of Sokoto, Alaj Muhammad Saad Abu Bakr III, and other royal highnesses, KBCs here present, honorable ministers, members of the National Assembly, my brother, the former speaker, and the second speaker, Professor Suleiman Ogoro distinguished invited guests, my lords, 
spiritual and temporal, our religious leaders, community leaders, our youth, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. Let me begin by expressing our gratitude to Almighty Allah for sparing our lives to witness this auspicious event of the 50th anniversary of establishing Arewa House, a research center of repute and the pride of the North in particular and Nigeria in general. 50 years in the life of an institution is a long journey which calls for sober reflections and assessment of journey so far with a view to identifying areas of success, challenges, and problems on the basis of which new proposals and directions that would elevate the institutions further could be taken. I am therefore elated to chair today's event, which marks a major milestone for us as a people. I wish to thank the management of Ario House and the Vice Chancellor of Amadou Bello University, Zaria, for the honor to chair this all important occasion. Your Excellencies, the Royal Highnesses, invited dignitaries, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Let me, at this point, commend the vision of the founding fathers of Ariel House, who in their own wisdom considered the imperative to set up the Northern Nigeria History Project, the precursor of this center to contribute in the search for lasting national peace and stability during critical moments of Nigerian history, especially after the Civil War. These great men have been listed by the last speaker who are not alive to witness this event. May God in his infinite mercies grant them eternal rest. Amen. Elijah Adamofika remains the only privileged one from among the pioneer members that established this center to still be alive today. Alhamdulillah. He is in our midst today. Coincidentally, he is the current pro-chancellor and chairman of the governing council of the prestigious Amadebello University, Zaria. And it is in honor of their foresight and contributions in establishing this epoch center that I request our elder statement, Mala Ademufika, the only surviving one from among them, to stand up for recognition, please. Thank you. You can. Your Excellencies, Your Royal Highnesses, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, you will all agree with me that the bold step taken to establish this center is in recognition of the fact that historical knowledge and experiences form the basis of understanding human actions in solving daily problems and challenges of engineering strategies for growth and development. Thus, in the face of social political crisis, societies invoke lessons from history to understand the immediate and remote causes of current events. This is a clear demonstration of the compelling role of history in our social and political lives, and indeed nation building. Ardua House has been a center of national harmony and cohesion, which is reflected by a plethora of activities it has undertaken in the last five years, which also the Vice Chancellor and the last speaker has enumerated. May Allah reward his efforts of building the North and indeed Nigeria. That is our former, the former Premier of Northern Nigeria, Sir Ahmed Bello, the Sadona of Sokoto, for this foresight. Amin. 
Haria House remains one of the only centers in Nigeria that has succeeded in bringing together people from diverse ethnic and religious backgrounds to discuss issues of national importance. On this note, I wish to specifically commend the management and staff of Arewa House for their unrelenting efforts in uniting us since its establishment. Starting from a humble beginning, Arewa has grown to serve as our mind. It has preserved our thoughts and memories of events and experiences over the course of five decades. These memories have been documented in written documents, material remains, and even oral history for ease of reference among other objectives. I therefore urge us all to continue to support the center in order to enable it continue to enable it continue with the pursuit for these noble goals. Your Excellencies, Your Royal Highnesses, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, part of the highlight of today's event is a paper to be presented by an eminent Nigerian and leader, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Ikiti State, and also the Chairman of Nigerian Governors Forum, my dear brother, Dr. Faye Mikayode, who I am sure will do justice to this subject. The lecture is entitled Unfinished Greatness Toward a More Perfect Union of Nigeria. The topic is indeed very apt given the fact that we as a people are still grappling with the issue of national unity, which is Sam Conan for the much desired greatness of our country. While I will not want to preempt our speaker, I strongly believe that he will highlight the critical role the founding fathers of Nigeria in lifting Nigeria to greatness on the basis of national unity. I am sure the speaker will also provide insight on how best to achieve unity in diversity in our contemporary society. And therefore, urge us all to listen to our erudite speaker with apt attention. I have also been briefed that another highlight of today's event is the recognition of some prominent Nigerians and foreigners for their contribution to the success story of Arewa House. Some of them have donated their whole library to Arewa House for wider reading and research. I congratulate the recipients of this rare recognition and honor. It is my hope that Arewa House continues to enjoy the goodwill of all of us to enable it to continue on this path of strengthening national cohesion and nation building, which is a major milestone achieved by the Center over the years. Before I end this remark, let me use the opportunity to appeal to the youth of this great country to exercise restraint while they demand for an end to alleged public brutality. No doubt your voices were loud and bold, but you must be calm and remain law abiding while the federal government addresses your grievances with the urgency that it deserves. Responding to the destruction of public assets and public peace remains condemned. In world history, countries that choose violence process to achieve change have become unimpressive and unattractive. We must therefore remain civil while we advocate for reforms. Finally, I once again wish to felicitate with the Ariel House for attaining 50 years of existence, 50 years in nation building, and indeed 50 years of adding value to humanity. Congratulations, and I thank you most sincerely for listening. Please.
Can I hear another big thunderous round of applause for His Excellency, former Vice President of the Federal Republic, Nigeria, Architect Muhammad Namadisambu, JCON. Before I call on the next, I would like to quickly recognize the presence of Sheikh Yusuf Muhammad Samburiga, Chukum Deputy National Chairman, Jibrish, from the National Headquarters. Sir, you're welcome. Permit me at this particular moment to call on the Royal Father of the Day, His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokto, Alaji Muhammad Saad Abu Bakr, for his own remarks. Please, a very big round of applause before his arrival. Thank you. I would be lying in the Sudan regime. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Wasallallahu ala Nabi al Karim. I am the Dona. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Everybody here is son or daughter of Sardona. Even the guest lecturer who happens to come from the southwest is the adopted son of Sardona. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh once more. Today is another historic day. Today is the day we always pray for. Today is the day we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his numerous blessings on us. Most especially we thank him today for bringing us here to this hall, to this sacred house of Nigerian politics, the Ariel House, to be part of this 50th anniversary of the establishment of Ariel House historical center for documentation of our actions across the northern states of this great country. I've had comments made by, uh, by the past speakers and I had a comment made as the only surviving member of the establishment of this house was here in Fika, chairman of the governing council of Ahmadi Bello University. I would like to bring to your attention one distinguished elderly person. We don't know his number of years, but he drove Saradona to all the places he went to during his lifetime. That man called Al Haji Ali Sarki Mota is here in this hall. And I would like him to stand up and come forward for recognition by all of us. Alaja Ali Zona. And he is going to walk on his two feet with an aid of a stick. And he dropped Sardona during Sardona's lifetime. And he's still alive and walking on his two feet. We thank Almighty Allah for his blessing on this man. Can I take a motor? I take a motor. So, I get a It's important for us to recognize those who serve us in particular and serve our country very well. Because the drivers who drove us are also important. They helped us to achieve our goals. Now everybody is focusing on Alaji Ali. They are forgotten about me, the speaker. But I'm not jealous. They've been part of our family for this number of years. And we thank him and we thank Allah for his life. 
As Alaja is going around getting rare handshakes from governors, which I believe he never thought he would one day shake such important hands. I would like to make reference to what brought us here today, the Ariawa House. And I would like to make a simple remark. Area House is a historical institution. And I would like us to look at what Area House has done in the last 50 years. Have we really achieved what we wanted to achieve by establishing this Area House? Therefore, I want to challenge Ahmad Bella University and this center to organize a roundtable conference of all historical leaders in the North and evaluate the role of Ariel House and what it was able to achieve and what we think we should achieve and plan for the future. This future university couldn't have come at a better time than now and we wouldn't have picked a better lecturer than the guest lecturer we have this morning. The governor of the state, the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, and my very good friend, the honest called JKF. And the topic is so apt. I would like to remind us about one thing. When the events of today were being prepared, nobody thought there was going to be NSAS protest in the country. Nobody knew that some people will come up and start asking for some people to leave various regions to their various places and start killing innocent people and destroying public and private properties. Nobody knew that these things were going to happen. Therefore, like our chairman rightly said, we're not going to prompt the guest lecturer. But we know the topic is so apt, it's so important for all of us, for the unity of this country, for the unity of our leaders, because when you do get to leadership positions, please drop political names or political affiliation. Once you are in a position, you should be a leader to all and for all. And that's what we want our political leaders to be and to do at all times. Alhamdulillah, we have so many dignitaries here. Very happy to see such galaxy of northern stars, governors and ministers, and elder statesmen. I think that goes to show that at least somehow we are doing something right somewhere. It's a challenge to all of us because we know where north is. The north of today is not the north Sardona had wanted to see or had dreamed about. Because it's not the same north that we see our children, hundreds of thousands of them roaming the streets begging for food in the name of Alma Jirch. It's not the same North Sardana I wanted to see where he wanted to see all our girls go to schools and he was very passionate of girl education. It's not the same North that he had wanted to develop, to develop by putting so many projects, the New Nigerian, Amadipa University, and so many other projects, so many infrastructure that are still standing tall. It's not the North that the one that I wanted to see now because he had built and put a very solid, strong foundation and left for our political leaders to build on that solid foundation. Bring everybody a result of tribe, of religion, or whatever it is, of affiliation. That is around now we've known as small children. That's what we've read about him at our later ages. And that's what we're trying to copy. And we're still trying to copy those excellent manners that Donna had and we are still struggling to copy those and we are still not yet there. But of course, every child who was born at an infancy, he tries to crawl, then to walk, then to get up and run. And at the end of his age, as given to him by Almighty Allah, he will come back again to start crawling and then down to the grave. So let's work together as Ariwa. Let's work together as Nigeria, let's develop Ariwa, 
because I've always said if Arewa is developed, it's part of Nigeria that's developed, so it's Nigeria that is developed. Just like other regions are also trying to develop or have developed to the limit or to the way they wanted, let's also develop. There have been so many changes, very positive changes. So we challenge our governor to do much, much more. Concentrate on education and other infrastructure development to help our people. Because we know yet there's poverty, but we should not allow poverty to make us wicked. But what happened in the last couple of weeks was mere wickedness by some disgruntled hoodlums. And I think it's important for us to say so loud and clear. And I want to think, we want to thank the majority of our northern youth who did not take part in this plundering of our assets because we would have been the worst for it. And therefore we commend our northern youth and we ask them to do more, we ask our governors to reach out to them more, include them in the administration of the various states or projects so that they also feel they belong and they will do much more for the north and for Nigeria. We thank the, as well as the governor for accepting to give us a lecture today and we pray for Almighty Allah's blessing on all of us and safe trip back to our various nations. May Allah continue to bless our country, our leaders, and may Allah grant our take us back to our various destinations at the end of this program. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please, he deserve another big, big round of applause as he has said it all. Let us develop the north. Ko barikida to Allah yasai modachi. It's my own singular honor and privilege at this particular moment to call on a man that has turned the Kaduna State into the higher height and still working. Nickname me Russo, but we finally found it is me, Yaro. Permit me to call on His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasuru Ame Rafai OFR. Your Excellencies, my colleagues, the governors of Ekiti, Jigawa, and Kepi states, our guest speaker, Governor Kaede Faemi of Ekiti states, and Professor Elias Bogoro, your Excellency, the former Vice President of Nigeria and former Governor of Kaduna State, Architect Muhammad Namadi Sambo, Your Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, my Barewa Senior, <laughs> Sultan Fahad Abubakar the Third, Your Royal Highnesses. Invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, please, please forgive me if I mix up the protocol. I'm delighted to welcome you all to Kaduna to this event that marks the Golden Jubilee, that is the 50th anniversary of the founding of Ariel House. Sorry, I forgot my brother, the representative of the president. Emberon, don't tell the president, please. On this day, I pay tribute to the vision of the six governors of the northern states who decided in 1970 to establish this center that has gone on to become a research center of international repute. They chose to honor the memory and service of the one and only premier of the northern region, Sir Ahmadi Bello, the Sardona of Sokoto, by locating this center on the grounds of his official residence. Out of the ashes of the tragic events of January 1966, our illustrious predecessors have built a center that continues to make significant contributions to nation building and peaceful coexistence. The astute net of Arewa House is demonstrated again in its choice of commemorative events for its 50th anniversary. The th 
theme of today's lecture, Unfinished Greatness Towards a More Perfect Union in Nigeria, speaks to an urgent national issue. I have no doubt that our guest lecturer, my brother, and the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, His Excellency Dr. Kaede Payemi, the governor of PTC State, will do great justice to this important topic. Inviting Dr. Kaede Fayemi is not a coincidence. We never do things in the north by accident. There is a reason, and the reason will unfold as time goes on. It is a matter, therefore, that is surely on the minds of every patriot, more so in these challenging times. I will not hesitate to admit that I'm passionate about what constitutional framework will best enable the promise of this great country to manifest. I've had the privilege of chairing the APC Committee on True Federalism with membership across the political and demographic spectrum to lay out our party's roadmap for our nation's greatness. In its report, the committee defined the values that in its opinion promote and connote true federalism and propose a clear roadmap for implementing the recommendations. As his reports show, the APC Committee on True Federalism produced clear recommendations to strengthen federalism and achieve national cohesion and healthy subnational competition. The committee also made efforts to accelerate the implementation of its recommendations by producing draft bills that incorporate the recommendations either as proposed amendments to our constitution or our national laws. It is a matter for regret that for some reasons the consequential action by the APC leadership to adopt and implement the report has not happened since it was submitted in January 2018. The urgency of our challenges dictates that we should move fast with a sense of purpose to remove the bottlenecks, the structural bottlenecks that hobble our country. There is very little time left and begin to implement the necessary constitutional amendment. While the report of our committee was well received, even by opposition parties, some people complained that it was coming too close to the 2019 elections. That for a report submitted in January 2018. The point here, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, is that our electioneering calendar presents only a narrow window for significant and consequential action to reform the political and structural framework to enable the rapid, peaceful, and inclusive development of our country. Mr. Chairman, His Eminence the Sultan, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to refresh our memories with the main recommendations our committee made. The APC Committee on Federalism recommended that the Federation be rebalanced with more powers and responsibilities devolved to the state. The committee also clarified that the federation is a relationship solely between the states and the federal government, and that each state should be allowed to operate the system of local government that best suits its circumstances, culture, and diversity. It was the committee's considered opinion that in a country as diverse as ours, one size or structure of local governance does not fit all. The committee's recommendations also cover how the states can generate the resources that will fund their envisaged expanded budgets, responsibilities, and authority. This includes a holistic review of the share of federation revenues accruing to the states and federal government. Our report also upheld the derivation principle as a primary component of fiscal federalism I recommended that control of mineral resources be vested in the states, who will then pay applicable royalties and taxes to the Federation account for distribution between all tiers of government. To make this work, we proposed and drafted the amendments of extant laws such as the Petroleum Act, the, Petro the Mining and Minerals Act, the Land Use Act, and the Petroleum Profits Act. Our report regarded derivation as being applicable as well to hydropower, solar and wind and other forms of renewable energy generation. The APC Committee on True Federalism proposed significant devolution of powers between the national government and the 36 states 
I recommended further devolution of responsibilities between the states and local governments depending on local circumstances, culture, capacity, and capability. We therefore recommended that the following items be transferred from the exclusive to the concurrent list in the Constitution and therefore will fall under the policy oversight and legislative control of both the states and the federal government. Number one, police. This will enable the establishment of state police and provide clear demarcation of responsibilities vis-a-vis -vis the federal or Nigerian police. Number two, oil and gas, other than offshore resources in the continental shelf and extended economic zone, protected by our Navy. So oil and gas resources in the land will be controlled by the states, but those that are offshore will be vested absolutely in the government of the Federation. Mines and minerals, other than offshore minerals in the continental shelf and extended economic zone, will also be treated as above. Number four, railways. Number five, prisons and correctional facilities. Number six, fingerprint and criminal identification records with statewide and federal linkages to share data. Number seven, stamp duties. Number eight, registration of business names. Number nine, food, drugs, and poisons other than narcotics. And number ten, minimum wage to enable state governments set what is affordable as a living wage in their respective jurisdictions. Our committee also suggested a remedy for the anomaly of a federation that has a more or less unitary judiciary. Our recommendation is that state judicial councils should be established, while the national judicial councils remit should be limited to the federal and appellate courts. And should majority opinions in certain states decide a that a voluntary merger of like-minded states would enhance their development prospects, we proposed a mechanism for achieving the merger of states. I'm firmly convinced, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, that restructuring our current constitutional and statutory framework around the lines proposed by our committee is a unique nation-building opportunity. I'm not aware of any significant constituency that is against the idea that states should exercise consequential powers, assume more responsibilities and control resources to enable them to deliver better outc outcomes for those they govern. It is time for the state government to cease passing the buck to the president and the federal government when most of the problems our citizens face daily as a nation are and can be solved by improved and focused governance at the state levels. It is time to make this sort of well-defined restructuring work for the benefit of the people of this country. In the last 20 to 25 years, Nigerian citizens and political groupings have used different registers to convey their demands for a loosening of the centralized arrangements that have increasingly prevailed since the military disrupted our parliamentary democratic order in 1966. Nigerians have consistently asked for devolution of powers to the states and seeds of national competition as the path to rapid progress. We are all witnesses to the regional competition in the 1950s and 1960s that gave us universities like Ahmad Bello University, University of Ife, and University of Nigeria in Suka, radio and TV stations, stadiums, generous scholarships, and affordable yet quality public education for all. The report of our APC True Federalism Committee puts in one place the recommendations and the legislative amendments to give life to a restructured polity. I therefore call on our federal legislators and the National Assembly Ad Hoc Committee on Constitutional Review to take advantage of our report and initiate the constitutional and legislative amendments in either a piecemeal or comprehensive manner without further delay. Our report and drug bills are all available online. Just Google APC True Federalism Report and download all of them today. We therefore have no excuse not to seize this moment and do the heavy lifting for our country and our people. It is in our hands to make the structures, laws, and constitutional arrangements in our country conducive to modern governance that will ensure that Nigeria thrives in the 21st century. We must move from a century of being a nation of great potentials to summoning a determined national effort to achieving near-developed country status. Singapore, South Korea, and China did it in a generation. 
Rwanda, Botswana, Ethiopia, and Africa are well on their way to achieving this. Why can't we do the same? Our progress in our, is in our hands. Thank you for listening. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. His Excellency, the Executive Governor of the State, Malam Ahmed Nasr El Rufai. Please, let's give him another round of applause. Your, Your Excellencies, the Chairman, and other distinguished personalities, it is my honor and privilege to invite His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Malam Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, who is ably represented here today by Engineer Suleiman Adamu, the Honorable Minister, Water Resources. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The chairman of this occasion, His Excellency Akhtinama Disambu, GCOM, Vice President, former of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Your Excellencies, Governor Nasir Rafai, our host, Governor John Kaede Faimi of Ikiti State, Governor Badura Abakar, Igao State, Governor Atipa Abakar, of uh, Kemi and Governor Rin Tambo of Sokoto State, His Eminence the Sultan of Sokoto, Your Highnesses, other traditional rulers, present representatives of state governors, our eminent elder statesmen here, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I have been directed by His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari to convey his felicitations to Ariel House on this auspicious occasion when they commemorate the 50 years anniversary of the founding of this most important documentation center. We are proud of the fact that uh, we have a powerful center, an intellectual center, that has been documenting the affairs and the history of this great region uh, and of course we need to understand that history is a very important aspect of our lives if we don't document it if we don't know where we are coming from we don't know where we will be going to this center has been able to document the history of our people our cultural heritage and our values and it is hoped that the work that this very important center is doing will help to recreate the values and aspirations and all those good things that our various diverse cultures in this country and especially in the northern region have been known for, uh, some of which have over the years seem to have been disappearing. Thank you. Mr. President extends his best wishes to the center and promises to continue to support your activities through the Amadebele University and uh, we'll be very, very grateful to see that uh, this center continues to bring out issues and intellectual discourses that will support the future development of this region and the unity and prosperity of this country. We wish you well, and once again, congratulations on this 50th anniversary celebration. Thank you very much. <laughs> Please, another big round of applause for ever prepared Honorable Minister of Water Resources, who represent His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Another big round of applause for him. Thank you. Uh, permit me to call for the citation of the guest speaker, His Excellency Dr. Kayo Defaemi, which will be delivered by Dr.
Dr. Hafsat Lowell Kuntubura. Thank you very much. Okay. Mr. Chairman, Your Excellencies, permit me to stand on the existing protocol. Um, I give honor to all who honor is due in this gathering. Mr. Chairman, permit me also to read the citation of our guest speaker, His Excellency. Dr. Kayodi Fayoli, C.O.N. Dr. Kayodi Fayoli, Governor of Equity State and Chairman Nigeria Governors Forum, NGF, is former Minister of Mines and Steel Development in the Government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria from 2015 to 2018. He led the administration's uh, efforts in repositioning the Nigerian mining sector to contribute optimally to the priority agendas of diversifying the country's revenue, revenue base and creating jobs and economic opportunity for Nigerians. During his tenure as minister, he concurrently uh, served as chairman of the governing board of the Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, the AT. He was also the governor of Ekiti State in southwest Nigeria from 2010 to 2014. Dr. Fayemi holds degrees in history and international relations from the University of Lagos and Obafemi Awolo University, respectively a doctorate in war studies from King's College, University of London, and is a fellow of the Center for Peace and Conflict Studies, University of the Ibadan. His research and policy development interests include natural resources governance, democratization, uh, constitutionalism, security sector governance, civil military relations, and regionalization, regionalism in the global context. Amongst other academic and public policy engagements at home and abroad, Dr. Faemi has lectured in Africa, Europe, and the Americas, and also Dr. Faemi uh, has lectured in Asia. He has also served as advisor on transitional ju justice regional integration, constitutionalism, security sector reforms, and civil military relations to various governments, multilateral institutions, and development agencies. Dr. Fayemi was the founding director of the Center for Democracy and Development, CDD, a research and training institute dedicated to the study and promotion of democratization, peace building, and human security in Africa. As a central figure in the coalition of civil society actors that resisted oppressive military rule in Nigeria in the early 1990s, he was central to the founding and running of opposition radio stations in EXA. His role in the struggle to restore democratic governance in Nigeria is documented in his book, out of the shadow, exile and the struggle for freedom and democracy in Nigeria, CDD 2005. His other publications include Mercenaries, the African Security Dilemma, co-edited with Abdel Fatal Musa Pluto Press in 2000. Deepening the culture of constitutionalism, the role of uh, regional institutions in constitutional development in Africa, CDD, that was in 2003, 
and Security Sector Governance in Africa, a handbook co-edited with Nicole Bell, CDD, in 2004, Reclaiming the Trust, Amandia, 2012, Re Regaining the Legacy, Amanda, 2013, and Legacy of Honor and Service, also in 2014. Dr. Fayemi is a prominent member of the Governing All Progressives Congress, APC, and chaired the party's National Convention Planning Committee that produced presidential candidate for the 2015 general election, and now, um, and now presidential candidate, and now president. He also served as the director of policy research and strategy of the APC Presidential Campaign Council. He was inaugurated as Governor Ekiti State for a second term on October 16, 2018. He is married to Erelu B.C. Payemi, the renowned women's and children's rights advocate, international development specialist, writer, and social entrepreneur. He has received several awards and recognitions at home and abroad and holds the national honor for Commander-in-Chief of the Order of the Niger, C-O-N. Thank you very much for this pleasure. May we, at this point in time, invite the guest speaker for his uh, lecture. Shall we please give him a big round of applause as he approaches the podium, please. His Excellency, the Governor of Ekiti State and the Chairman, Nigerian Governors Forum. Thank you. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the Chairman of today's lecture, our leader, former President, Architect Nama Sambo, and FNIA. Your Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, ably represented here by my brother, the Honorable Minister of Water Resources, Engineer Suleiman Adamun Dambram Kazare. Your Excellency, our Chief Host, the Executive Governor of Kaduna State, my elder brother Malam Nasru Ahmed Hel Rufai, my Vice Chairman, the Nigerian Governors Forum, Motowale Sokoto, Governor Amino Tambuo, the Chairman of the All Progressive Governors Forum, and Governor of KB State, Governor Atiku Abakabagudu, my brother, the Governor of Jigawa State, Alaji Badru Abubaka, all the governors here represented, His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, and the Sultan of Bakar. I have a strong delegation representing our royal fathers from Ekiti here, led by the chairman of the Ekiti State Council of Traditional Rulers and the Alawe of Ilawe Ekiti, Oba Adebanji Alabe, Royalness, the Ata of Ayede, the Alare of Are, the Onisho official, and the Onisim body of his body representing our real fathers. Honorable ministers, members of the National Assembly and Federal Executive Council here present, my co-speaker cool here, Professor Suleiman Bogoro, my good friend, the Executive Secretary of Tet Fund. There's so many distinguished Nigerians here, but allow me to especially honor the only remaining member, as has been said, was Rim Fika Alaji Adamufika, 
our elder who is here, all the distinguished invited guests, my Lord spiritual and temporal, our religious and community leaders, ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum. I would like to start by first thanking the leadership of Arewa House for the great honor of inviting me to speak at the Golden Jubilee anniversary of this great institution. I also want to congratulate you both for this historic moment and for the wonderful work you have done in the last 50 years, mobilizing and interpreting our history to explain the present and illuminate the path to our future. Through a faithful and relentless engagement with history, Arewa House has indeed built a great history for itself. The institution was founded with clear and deliberate intentions. One, to immortalize the legacies of a great political leader and former premier of the defunct northern Nigeria, Sir Madibelo the Sadana of Sokoto. And two, to serve as a bastion of the collective memory of the people of northern Nigeria in particular and Nigeria at large. As a student of history myself, the importance of the preservation of history in the evolution of any society is not lost on me. I must therefore commend you all for the great work that started in 1970 when Nigeria came out of an unfortunate civil war and the Interim Common Services Agency, ICSA, was established to manage the common assets and liabilities of the then six northern states and the history of Northern Nigerian Committee was inaugurated to, among other things, document the history of the North. A major recommendation of the committee was the establishment of a center for historical documentation and research. Professor Abdullah Smith, one of the foremost historians at the Amadibelo University at the time, took up the pioneering role of establishing the center. Since then, the center, popularly known as Ariwa House, has grown in leaps and bounds, moving its base in 1972 to the residential quarters and official com office complex of the late premier of northern Nigeria, Sir Amadibelo, the Dana of Sokoto. The pioneers, such as Professor Abdullahi Smith, Professor Abdullahi Mahdi, Dr. George Koinashe, Dr. Amit Boboy, and right up to the current leadership of Dr. Shaibu Shehu Ali, all ensured that within a relatively short time, the center acquired such an international reputation that it attracted scholars from all over the world. Upon the abolition of ICSA, Arewa House was transferred to Amadou Bello University as a research center which houses an archive, a library, a rich collection of books, and a museum complex. I have gone down the memory lane to recall the history of Arewa House in order to underline the noble objectives, as well as the deep commitment of the pioneers in establishing such an important center of learning and knowledge sharing. No doubt, these great gentlemen must have believed that every successful society has been built on a strong foundation of knowledge and its pivotal role in human development. I salute the memory of the great Sir Amadi Bello, whose central political philosophy, like that of the great American founding father Thomas Jefferson, was that every Nigerian, and indeed all human beings, are created equal and that they are all endowed by God and with rights among which are life, liberty, equal opportunity, blessing, and the legitimate pursuit of happiness. 
throughout his life and career, the late Dawana of Sokoto espoused high morality and intellectual virtues in the public square, virtues that we would all do well to revisit and pay more attention to these days. His choice of the motto for the North is work and worship. And in his Christmas message to citizens in 1959, he underscored his deep belief in unity and diversity. When he stated that here in northern Nigeria, we have people of many different races, tribes, and religions who are knit together by common history, common interests, and common ideas. The things that unite us are stronger than the things that divide us. Speaking in this great citadel of research and learning this morning, I must acknowledge that I am following in the footsteps of giants who have been guest speakers at the annual Ariwa House lecture over the years. Elder statesmen like General Yakubu Gowan, late President Sho Shagari, my own boss and leader, President Muhammadu Buhari, Malamata Mutiroma, Chifango Abdullahi, respected scholars like Professor Ishaya Audu and Professor Abdullahi Smith, technocrats like Elijah Lima and Chiroma, and Ambassador Jolly Tanko Yusuf, royalties like the late Sultan Abaka III and the late Obai Radio of Benin, as well as religious leaders and scholars such as the late Abaka Mahmoud Gumi, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, and Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka. I really do hope that I'm, I'm able to live up to the standard set by these previous distinguished speakers. I must thank the planning committee of the 50th anniversary for giving me the latitude to choose the topic of my lecture. Consequently, I've chosen to speak today on a topic that encapsulates the challenges of the last 50 years, in addition to embodying our unflagging thirst for unity and national integration. Quite incidentally, events of the past few weeks have brought into sharper focus our beleaguered journey to nation building, which reached a significant landmark of 60 years on October 1st, 2020. The topic of my reflection this morning is unfinished greatness towards the more perfect union in Nigeria. And the topic rests on a core assumption that there was a greatness, or at least a journey towards greatness, which has remained unfinished. It also asserts that it is only by building a more perfect union that we can accomplish the task of greatness for which we have demonstrated so much potential for the better part of our history. This notion of our unfinished greatness was also expressed by the late President Umaru Musa Yaradua in his presidential address to commemorate Nigeria's 49th independence anniversary on October 1st, 2009. He noted thus, today should be a forceful remember, reminder of our unfinished greatness, of the promise yet to be fulfilled, of the dream deferred for too long, and of the work that is still outstanding. Indeed, not many would disagree with the view that there is a significant gap between our potentials for greatness as a country and the reality of where we are now. It is therefore incumbent on all well-meaning Nigerians to leverage all progressive avenues and platforms such as this to interrogate our journey to greatness, our historical missteps, our accomplishments, and most importantly, the imperatives towards a more perfect union. These issues have become particularly germane against the backdrop of recent events. First, the coronavirus pandemic, which has undermined the economies of all countries, especially 
those in the global south. Nigeria was no exception, and the biggest challenge faced by government at both the federal and subnational levels is how to mitigate the impact of the pandemic on our economy to enable us to meet the expectations of our people. Second, the youth-led protest against police brutality and SARS, which eventually metamorphosed into agitation for more holistic reforms on issues of good governance, accountability, and greater inclusion of the youth demography that forms the majority of our population. Nation building is a continuous work in progress. Renowned Nigerian author Ben Okri in his award-winning book, The Famished Road, tells of a people who for several generations have been trying to build a road. But no matter how hard they work, they never go far in the end of it. Even then, whatever little progress they make is always destroyed by disaster beyond their comprehension, and they would have to start all over much like the cause of Sisyphus. Yet, every generation understands that it is its destiny to try and complete the road. History has taught them that the road will never be completed, but they never give up because each generation hopes that it will be the generation that gets the job done. Several commentators have noted that Okri's unfinishable road is in fact a grand metaphor for nation building. However, in relating this story to our country, Nigeria, and our own efforts at nation building rather than the collapsing road, I will think in terms of an infinite wall of greatness with the natural potential to reach far beyond the skies. It is the destiny of every generation to build on this wall and take it to a higher level even though we know that the job will never be done because there is no real limit to how high we can build. Reflecting on our recent history, it is easy to point at many false starts or even several instances when we have outrightly betrayed our generational mission. We may indeed wonder that despite the great effort of the past 60 years, how come this great war has barely left the foundation stage, even with our enormous wealth of bricks and mortars and our expert builders. But 60 years may be a long time in the life of an individual, but a 60-year-old nation is a nation yet in its infancy. Therefore, rather than despair over the failures of the past, it will be more productive that we look ahead with great hopes at the infinite future that lies ahead of us. Armed with that immortal admonition from the French West Indian psychiatrist and political philosopher, Franz Fanon, that every generation must, out of relative obscurity, discover its mission, betray it, or fulfill it. Over the years, Nigerians have agonized over the lamentably slow pace of our development. Successive governments and policymakers have responded with various approaches and strategies for achieving the most desired national development. Yet, even the most charitable analysts of our political economy would agree that we have not performed to our optimum capability. So many experts have made great efforts to explain our underdevelopment, with some, like the late Professor Claude Ake, even arguing that development was never part of the post-colonial African political agenda. It appears to me, however, that the fundamental challenge is that all along, we have been placing the cart before the proverbial horse. Before we can think of development, we must first solve the problems of nation building because you cannot develop what you do not have. When the Nobel laureate Walesho Inka asked, when is a nation? 
He was attempting to draw our attention to those urgent questions of nation building that have remained largely unanswered till this day. The development of every nation necessarily derived from elite consensus. However, this consensus can only be forged after some fundamental questions, what we call the national questions, have been settled. Where the very existence of the nation itself is easily brought to question at the slightest provocation, it should be clear that we have to ask and settle certain questions first. And it is the settlement that will then provide the ground norm for our vision of society and the structure and direction of our national development. In short, the very notion of national greatness is directly consequential to nation building. Over the years, I have had even presumably informed analysts refer to our country as the mistake of 1914. But was the amalgamation really a mistake? The American social philosopher Eric Hoffer argued that divide and rule is most effective when it fosters a multiplicity of compact bodies, racial, religious, or economic, vying with and suspicious of each other. Therefore, it is possible to argue that the toxic legacy of the divide and rule strategy may be the reason that we have remained divided even 60 years after the rule has ended. However, to describe the amalgamation itself as a mistake would be wrong, both historically and conceptually. The hands that drew the map may not have been ours, but the map was possible only because we are here in the first place. Every student of history will agree that as a people, if not as a country, Lord Lugard did not introduce us to ourselves. Long before the white man set his foot on our land, our people have developed an intricate network of relationships. Even though they lived in their various enclaves as independent people, they traded together, they married one another, they fought together as allies in battles, and against one another as adversaries. Our cultures intermingled freely and produced rich synthesis of cultures in such a way that no single culture was left pure or unaffected from this intercourse, as evidenced in new vocabularies, diet, and even our dressing. It is also important to note that many of our empires and kingdoms were territorial rather than tribal. They luxuriated and thrived on their diversity and formed unions and alliances based on shared understanding and mutual respect. A cursory analysis of our languages and belief systems will reveal, like the Sadana Saramadi Bello noted, that we actually have more in common than some of our differences would suggest. Therefore, while the colonialists may have been culpable for creating the country that we call Nigeria without consulting us, the task of forging a nation out of this colonial invention rests squarely in our hands. And this task must progress from a deliberate effort to remobilize and reinterpret our history, especially our pre-colonial history. And if we take a sociological perspective, we will see clearly that we did not arrive here by chance or as mere product of colonial misadventure. The famous, in his book titled, Can Anything Good Come Out of History? Famous historian, Obari Ikime, observed that it is not colonialism that introduced the Igbos to the Igala, the Canaries to its neighboring state, the Efik to the Ibibios and the Igbos, the Shekiris to the Urubos, or the Yorubas to the Nupe. Brought together, sometimes by forces of geography and history, all these people, he noted, knew about themselves and respected their varying cultures and susceptibilities. He went further to underline the important role that historians and teachers of history must play 
as we strive to build a United Nation out of this colonial legacy called Nigeria. He argued that there is a need to provide a general framework of our nation's history, a need to indicate broad influences and operative factors in our history, a need to identify the nature and impact of contacts between our people, and a need to identify factors that make for the differences discernible among our people. One of the most popular anecdotes that survived from our early efforts at nation building was the one credited to the late Sadana of Sokoto Saamadi Bello. He was said to have retorted in one of the conversations that in coming together as a country, we do not need to forget our differences. Rather, we only need to recognize and respect them. It is not clear to what extent this wise admonition was taken on board by our founding fathers as they tried to grapple with the challenges of nation building in post-colonial Nigeria. However, embedded in the notion of unity in diversity is a distinct awareness that sameness is not necessarily a precondition of oneness. Perhaps one major area that the successive generation has failed is in this tendency to stigmatize difference and weaponize diversity. We are Muslims. We are Christians. We are animists. We are Idoma. We are Thieb. We are Angers. We are Igbo. We are Alsa. We are Yoruba. We are Kanuri. We are Fulani and so on and so forth. If we take the admonition of Sir Amadou Bello, we don't need to apologize for these differences or attempt to even hide them because there is nothing wrong in being different. The problem starts only when this social categorization become the boundaries for inclusion or exclusion. Development anthropologists have long concluded that culture plays a crucial role in development. In other words, every culture essentially contains the facilities for progress and advancement. The language in which we articulate our ideas, our diet and consumption patterns, our architecture and the way we live, our religion and how we understand our relationship with God and to the universe, our notion of ethics, morality and justice, all of this in different forms and at different levels provide the essential driving force for development. What this means, therefore, is that the more diverse the cultures within a nation, the more resources they have for development and for progress. In essence, homogeneity is not necessarily a blessing and diversity need not be a cause. This is why it is important to always make the distinction between our difference, which is essentially benign, and the politicization of that difference, which constitutes the malignant cancer in the body of our nation. One thing we do not seem to celebrate enough is our ability to live together as a diverse but unified country, despite the centrifugal forces of our politics. It is in fact what makes us better than even Europeans who have found diversity management a lot more difficult. Countries in the Balkan Peninsula have collapsed into Yugoslavia, collapsed Yugoslavia into Serbia, Bosnia, Croatia, and Herzegovina, and gave us the word Balkanized. Czechoslovakia became Czech and Slovak nation. The Soviet Union couldn't hold it together. And Britain still has not found the definitive answer to the Irish, Welsh, and Scottish question. But imagine Nigeria with over 250 ethnic nationalities, and particularly in Arewa, where no state, indeed few communities, can claim to be homogeneous. Yet, we have managed our diversity very well until we lost the values of tolerance equity, fairness, and justice 
which we inherited from our founding fathers, such as Mr. Dana of Sokoto. I made reference earlier to the issue of, issue of inclusion and exclusion. It seems to me that it is one important way that we have poisoned the well of our diversity by misapplying our difference, our diversity, which will be the strength of our unity, then becomes its major threat. Because as salesman Demfodio in his book, Bear and Wujub Al Hijra, noted, one of the sweetest ways of destroying a state is to give preference to one particular tribe over another or to show favor to one group of people rather than another. This view is also strongly supported in research conducted by the Ariwa Research Development Project, which emphasizes that issue of nation building is increasingly centered around citizenship rights and equality in accessing this right, special and conscious efforts to safeguard minorities and disadvantaged groups, gender equality in political and social economic spheres of a nation, protection of cultural assets. In the days of the Sadana Sahamadu Bello, respect for each other's faith was a norm. The late Ambassador Jolly Tanko Yusuf, one of the young technocrats close to the Sadana, once shared a story right here at Arawa House of how the Sadana supported them to establish the Northern Christian Association on the 10th of April, 1964. He recalled that he and Mr. Edward Manuso, the then Provincial Commissioner for Sadana Province, wrote a letter to the Premier and engaged Sadana on the matter without any form of hostility or reprimand. His testimony was equally corroborated by late Chief Sunday Awoni, who said that Sadana ensured that Muslims and Christians had equitable access to the corridors of power. They spoke to the motto, work and worship, and to the values of hard work, accountability, honesty, dedication to duty, selfless service to the people, religious tolerance, foresight, and vision. Many of these values cohere to what those from my part of the country know as the Omoluabi ethos, and what is commonly known among the Hausa as Mutumun Kriki, or among the Fulani as the Pulaki values. The concept of the good man are apology to Tonika Green. Despite the challenges that we have faced as a nation, which we sometimes unfairly exaggerate, it is important for us to constantly bear in mind that nation building is a slow and dynamic, even frustrating process. The awareness that nothing in nation building is finalized should give us hope and challenge us to do better and constantly look for ways and means to build a better country by experimentation and learning, trial and error, setting and resetting. And this is why the operative framework of any nation is never intended as a divinely inspired scripture. Most of the challenges that we face today could not have been envisaged in 1999. But we must see these challenges as opportunities to test our governance system and its response capacity to issues of national coexistence. The integrity of our governance and administrative system must be continually measured in terms of its ability to deliver the greater good to the greatest number of our people. If it is not able to do this, we must be willing to press the reset button and ask ourselves, why is the system that we all must submit to not working for us all? However, for us to constructively confront this issue, we must start by first conquering the demon of mutual suspicion and distrust that has poisoned our politics and subverted our will to achieve the necessary consensus that is so crucial to marching confidently towards our destiny as a great nation. If we do this, we would have scaled the major obstacle to forging a great nation out of this colonial creation 
and show the world that we're finally ready to embrace our true destiny as the hope of all black people everywhere. What are then the imperatives for a more perfect union? The word perfect, Mr. Chairman, is superlative. Therefore, to speak of building a more perfect union is to be superfluous. But embedded in that deliberate superfluity is a fundamental notion of eternal work in progress, a perpetual commitment to perfection and improvement no matter how satisfying or dissatisfying the present condition is. The second stanza of our national anthem ends with an infinity that underlines that nation building is an unending search for perfection. And it says, to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. For the next 1,000 years, no matter the progress we would have made, as long as this country continues to exist, Generation after generation will continue to seek to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. It is credit to the genius of whoever invented this line that both the mission and the means to achieve the mission is captured in one simple phrase. The path to nation building is peace. The path to peace is justice and the path to justice is equity and inclusion. Even for Americans who coined the mantra of a more perfect union, it was done out of the understanding that the work of nation building is never done. If a country like the United States, forged out of a common purpose and common consent, perpetually seeks to make a more perfect union, we certainly have no excuse to give up on the task of nation building in Nigeria. Permit me, Excellencies, Royal Highnesses, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, to return to Ben Okri, who wrote in the same book, The Famished Road, that each new generation begins with nothing and with everything. They know all the earlier mistakes. They may not know that they know, but they do. They know the early plans, they know the original intentions, they know the earliest dreams. Each generation has to reconnect the dreams for themselves. They tend to become a little wiser, but don't go very far. It is possible that they now travel slower and will make bigger mistakes. That is how they are as a people. They have an infinity of hope and an eternity of struggle. Nothing can destroy them except themselves, and they will never finish the road that is their soul, and they do not know it. End of quote. Okri tells us that the work of nation building is for all generations, and how far each generation is able to go on the journey to nation building and the attainment of greatness depends on the aggregate character and predilections of that generation. Perhaps as products, of a specific period of our history and national experience we are distrustful of change even if change is what our situation recommends. We must however take note that the generation that wants to take over from, our, from us are products of a different historical experience. A great number of the young Nigerians who recently marched on the streets in the NSAS protest never lived under military rule. They are akin to the people whose appetite South Africans refer to as the bomb-free generation. Because they can take the fact of democracy for granted, it is difficult for them to see democracy as an end in itself. What really matters to them is what democracy can do for them, how it can work for them, and how it can help to facilitate their dreams nurtured in the cusp of some of the most rapid transformation in human history, they are less fearful of change and experimentation. If it is not working, they want it fixed. This is why anyone 
who holds a semblance of power or authority in this country should be deeply worried by the events of the past few weeks. What started as an innocuous online protest over police brutality snowballed before our very eyes into a movement that assumed more frightening dimensions. From the demand to end SARS, we have seen vigorous demands for greater accountability and greater efficiency in government. But we have also seen extremely unruly behavior. What I understand the youth to be saying, however, is that we, the older generation, have failed them by our inability to create a system that supports their dreams and accommodate their aspirations. From the language of their protest, we can see clearly that our youth feel pushed to the margins of our nation's socio-political and economic structures. It is incumbent on us to listen to what they are saying, and a lot more that they are probably not saying yet. For over a decade, several analysts have noted that our massive youth population could be a major demographic advantage to our country if it is properly harnessed. Years of neglect and failure to make the right investment to support this population is now quite predictably turning it to a major disruptive force and a time bomb. I'm afraid that the bomb has started to tick. We must therefore act fast and start now to create systems that provide opportunity for our young people and make it possible for them to attain their God-given potentials. In responding to the challenges that this movement imposes on us, we must recognize that a business-as-usual approach will no longer be sufficient. What we need is a fundamental re-engineering of our governance system in a way that will make our country work better for everyone. I understand the recent protest as a discursive signal that encapsulate the frustration of our young people at multiple levels. We must therefore engage it as such and try to focus on the opportunities that the situation presents. Restructuring, devolution, fiscal federalism, and greatness. In our quest towards a more perfect union, therefore, the main challenge is one of recreating the union and the basis of its fundamental national association. Unfortunately, this is one issue that we have allowed to be implicated in our instinctive, instinctive mutual suspicion and our unnecessary breakbacks. Caught in our politics of difference and otherness, devolution, decentralization, restructuring, and such other concepts have come to mean different things to different people, depending on their ethnic and regional toga. Our age-long distrust and suspicions of one another are now being tested and contested on the basis of this issue that should really be the pivot of our nation-building efforts. However, stripped of all opportunity and dysfunctional baggage, these concepts should simply refer to a way to reimagine and reinvent our country to make it work well for everyone. And you just had my brother, the governor of Kaduna State and chairman of the APC Committee on True Federalism articulate in very clear terms how that should work. But let me also associate fully with the views of respected scholar and former chairman of INEC uh, Professor Atairu Jega, who I believe must be somewhere in this hall, when he said that sooner than later, these matters have to be addressed squarely, but dispassionately. The challenge is how to address the issue of restructuring the Nigerian federal system without upsetting the apple cart. That is, how to add value to the structure and systemic efficacy of the federal arrangement without unleashing instability occasioned by the mobilization of ethnic, regional, and religious sentiments and identities. Jagar 2017. I will argue, therefore, 
that our idea of restructuring must be motivated only by our generational responsibility to perfect our union and to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign based on an operative principle that true greatness lies in building a country that works for everyone regardless of the language they speak or how they understand and worship God. The evolution of Nigeria's federalism has not served our best interest and it is not surprising that we have witnessed protests at every attempt at constitutional re-engineering. Two prominent examples were the 2005 Constitutional Reform Conference convened by President of Asunjo's administration and the 2014 National Conference at the instance of President Jonathan. In the two conferences, the delicate issue remains that of restructuring, often dubbed devolution of power, decentralization, through federalism, and so on and so forth. But for how long can we continue to run away from this issue and continue to pretend that somehow it will resolve itself someday? In my view, structural changes like state creation and merger would appear to me unrealistic in a democratic dispensation. I also do not think we can easily go back to the pre-1966 regional structure or adopt the 54 federating unit proposal of the 2014 conference, which I find quite unrealistic, no matter the appeal or attraction in some quarters. Rather, our preoccupation should be how we can make the current structure work better for us in terms of first, our governance system, second, our economy and national productivity, and third, citizenship and inclusion. There may be other issues that should be the object of restructuring or devolution, but I consider these to be paramount. Therefore, in my view, Restructuring should be less about redrawing the map of Nigeria, but more about building a more efficient governance system that is capable of delivering the greater good to the greatest number of our people. In essence, our desire to build a more perfect union should be anchored on the principle of devolution of powers, that is, reallocation of powers and resources to the country's federating units. The reasons for this are not far-fetched. First, long years of military rule has produced an over-concentration of powers and resources at the center to the detriment of the states. Two, the 1999 constitution, as has been argued by several observers, was hurriedly put together by the departing military authority and was not a product of sufficient inclusiveness. Part of the focus of such an exercise should be what items should remain on the exclusive legislative list and which ones should be transferred to the concurrent list. Other topical issues include derivation principle, fiscal federalism and revenue allocation, land tenure, local government creation and autonomy. All points considered the fiscal burden of maintaining a largely inefficient and overbloated bureaucracy is clearly a metaphor for shooting oneself on the foot. Again, in arriving at a position on what ought to be in the curse for a more perfect union, I wish to further say that my sentiments are more associated with strengthening the subnational units, that is the state, in the reallocation of powers and resources the assignment of functions that will be consistent with a devolved but strengthened federal system would have a short, exclusive federal list focusing mainly on national defense and security, the macroeconomy, foreign affairs, customs and excise, and joint responsibility in respect of certain functions that are currently assigned exclusively to the federal government. For example, internal security and policing and primary responsibility of the subnational government in respect to other functions in the second schedule of the 1999 constitution whilst the remaining powers 
devolved completely to states. On revenue collection and sharing, the position of the Nigerian Governors Forum, which I heard, is that the sharing formula should be reviewed in favor of the state, especially given the argument of devolved responsibilities to the subnationals. In the context of the proposed new federal structure, governors have argued for a formula along the lines of 42% to states, 35% to the federal, and 23% to local government. Remaking Nigeria through devolution of powers and reorganization of federating units is an idea whose time has come. To quote Atairu Jega again, by working hard and rationally, scientifically, to remove all the distortions in our federal system, we would have a better functioning federation with only states as federating units with conscious commitment to zonal cooperation among contiguous states, with local governments subsumed under states, with substantial devolution of power, responsibilities, and resources from the federal government to the state, and with mechanisms of ensuring greater equality of opportunity for all, and affirmative action for inclusion of the marginalized minorities and groups discriminated against in the country, Jagar 2017. Goodness beckons and the power of leadership. Whilst we are gathered here to celebrate the vision of our founding fathers, who put us on a somewhat progressive footing, the reversals that we experienced mainly from the implosions that arose within the polity and the incursion of authoritarian rule alongside its civilian inflections, enthroned a paradigm of government and public governance that coalesced around waste, bureaucratic inefficiency, red tapism, and certainly corrosive corruption. Thereafter, we witnessed how the state became more and more unitary, and how the contest for the privileges of the center took on an increasingly desperate tenor among the different groups and stakeholders in our country. While corruption and state exclusion thrived, several groups began to feel a sense of alienation, leading to the desertion of a sense of national citizenship and affiliation to the state, which they subsequently considered as being a contraption to be exploited for individual gain, a cake that everyone needed to grab a share of. Just whatever could be taken out of the center, more so illegally, was considered acceptable and just within the perception of local interest. Excellencies, Ryanesses, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, from the foregoing, what is evident is that most prominently at the national level, the Nigerian post-colonial state has not behaved in any fundamentally different way from the colonial state. Even though operated by Nigerians, the post-colonial state has been as alien and as predatory as its colonial predecessor. As late Professor Claude Ake argued in the early 1990s, this legacy has its roots in the colonial era when political discourse excluded not only democracy and even the idea of good government, and politics was reduced to the clash of one exclusive claim to power against another. The question, therefore, is how can the business of state be serious business in a context in which public governance is likely a predatory exercise in which power is captured from citizens and not freely given by citizens, a contest in which the consent of the people is not integral to the constitution of legitimacy. Against the backdrop of the post-colonial state in Africa, it is still possible to argue that political leadership remains a major determinant of good public governance. The African experience, among others, has shown that the quality, the vision, patriotism, and competence of the political leadership is critical to the transformation of African states and the possibilities of good government. 
in our specific experience in Nigeria, we also have instances of how the quality of leadership has produced good system of public governance, even if few and far between. And many of us in this hall can readily give the example of Northern Nigeria under Sir Madi Bello, Western Nigeria under Chief Obafemi Awolo, and in a number of our states even now. Yet, important as the power of leadership is, until and unless we recompose the Nigerian state and make it derive our original consent and legitimacy from its people, then we labor in vain. Contrary to the pretensions of neoliberal economists, without a modern state, there cannot be an economy or society. Therefore, before public governance, there must be a modern state in the real sense. A predatory state cannot give birth to proper public governance and a sense of justice and fairness. Those of us in public office may delude ourselves, but the events of the past few weeks have brought the contradictions of the Nigerian state into a sharper focus. Whether your immediate concern is police brutality and the need for police reform, or you reflect upon the rationale and the challenges of those in the Northeast who insist that until Nigeria becomes a theocracy, there shall be blood and tears unlimited. Whether you look towards the Niger Delta, where despite the amnesty and the industry of graft and greed that it has reproduced, there is a continuous and bloody demand for justice and equity, or you examine the endless pretext for ethnic strife and bloodletting between the indigenous people and the so-called settlers in the middle belt, whether you scrutinize the regular apocalyptic predictions of highly placed Nigerians about the fate of the country, or you contemplate what would happen if measures are not taken to arrest the drift, you cannot but come to the conclusion that Nigeria needs to be reimagined and recreated. Excellencies, Royal Highnesses, distinguished guests. In conclusion, I leave you with another famous quotation from Sheu Usman Damfodio, which I understand was the guiding principle of Sadauna's leadership style as premier when he was still alive. And in his book, Sheu Usman Damfodio, the book referenced earlier, Bayan Wujib al-Hijra, the great Islamic reformer, said, and I quote, a kingdom can endure with unbelief, but it cannot endure with injustice. May we have the courage and the conviction to confront injustice in our country and make Nigeria work for us all. Thank you for listening. We have just listened to a teacher, a lecturer, an excellent administrator who has been doing wonderful well for the upliftment of the state. His Excellency, Dr. Kayo De Faemi, the Federal Governor of the State and Chairman Nigerian Governors Forum. Please. Exceptional round of applause once more for him. And we are saying to His Excellency Oshibo, permit me to already uh, recognize the presence of Munir Ahmed Registrar representing Dr. Abdullah Al Hassan Ahmed, Rector Federal Polytechnic Nasarawa, and also from Nasarawa Megirma Sarikim Fulani. Senator Walid Jibrin, and also Madam Umaru Meere, all are from the Chamber of Commerce Kaduna, and you are all highly and respectfully welcome. Back to Ahmed Zayan at this particular moment.
so that we will know where we are going next during the presentation of uh, awards which is about to be presented to few of us and uh, some posthumously and some still alive as we join to congratulate them in advance. Thank you so much, Jibril. Before we do that, I would like to quickly acknowledge my former boss and uh, presently representing the Executive Governor of Bauchi State, the former DG FRCN, Dr. Ladan Salu, Bardenge Mambouchi, Chief of Staff, Chief of Staff, Bauchi State. So you are most welcome. Equally, Dr. Osman Bugaje is here with us. Tukur Megali from Foreign Affairs, and former Minister State for Petroleum, Alaji Umaru Jambu. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as you have been made aware, the, there will be some award presentation, and we would like to start with the first category of the awards. This first category include the committee that established Ariwa about 50 years ago. Incidentally, to God be the glory, today are the six elder statesmen that piloted and established Ariwa House. Only one of them is survived, is alive at the moment. We thank God for that. They have done their best. They gave out their yesterday for our tomorrow. To do the presentation, may I humbly and respectfully invite the Sultan to make the presentation of these awards. However, their families, the families of uh, the award recipients are expected to please hurry up so that the receive the awards on behalf of uh, their family. May I now call open the Wazir Mfika, the only surviving member of the committee members that established Ariwa House. The Wazir Mfika, please. Thank you so much. May I now call upon the family of uh, Alhaji Ali Akilu. Alhaji Ali Akilu. <coughs> Malam Leman Choma. Chief Sunday Awoni. Alhaji Yusuf Gobir. And Malam Gidado Idris. These are the members of the committee that established Ariwa House 50 years ago. House. Please posthumously clap for Abdullah Smith. Please, thank you very much. <laughs> Professor Abdullah Mahdi also to be presented by Professor Abdullahi Musa. Professor Musa Abdullahi. Dr. Hamid Bobe, please, can you kindly come forward? That is the executive director, secretary, you back. Okay. He's also coming right now. Yeah. Uh, we're very grateful to the chairman of this occasion, former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Please, let's wake ourselves up. Another big round of applause for the chairman of the occasion who has been leading excellently as we move on forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. May I? Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. 
Your Excellencies, the next category of the award is the Donors Award. And to make the presentation, may I invite the Governor of Kaduna State, Madam Ahmed Nasri Rufai, to make the presentation. May I invite Professor Livas. This is uh, one of the donors. Professor Witeka, the Honorable Minister of Water Resources, I understand, will receive on behalf of uh, Professor Witeka, the Honorable Minister of uh, Water Resources, will receive the award on behalf of Professor Witeka. Dr. Professor Witeka, Dr. Mahmoud Tukur. I understand the family of Dr. Mahmoud Tukur are expected to be here and to receive on behalf of uh, Dr. Mahmoud Tukur. Shehu Ahmed Arabi Jos. His family, I understand, is here to receive on his behalf. Mamutuku, please. Mamutuku. This way. Hi. Yeah. Shehu Ahmed Arabi Jos. Malam Ahmed Pufori. His family, I understand, is here to receive on the behalf of the family, on him, on his behalf. Malam Ahmed Furore. Furore, sorry, Furore. Malam Ahmed Furore. Please, hurry up. While we thank His Excellency after the presentation of uh, the award, we quickly invite Malam Ahmed Pufuri. Uh, Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. The last award, may I invite the representative of uh, the President and Commander in Chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, who is ably represented by the Minister of Water Resources to make the presentation to the guest speaker. The Honorable Minister, standing in for the President, will make the presentation to uh, His Excellency, the Governor of the State, German Nigerian Governors Forum. Thank you, Your Excellency. Yeah, just one. Thank mm -hmm. you the indulgence of uh, His Excellency. The Honorable Minister is sitting in for the President to make the presentation to Professor Suleiman Elias Oguru. The representative of the president is going to make the presentation, please. Thank you, His Excellency. May I quickly invite Professor Suleiman Elias Ogoro to uh, give remarks on behalf of the awardees. The Remark from the Executive Secretary, Third Fund. On behalf of the audits.
the chairman of the occasion and former vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Namadi Sambo. Permit me to so that it be more audible. Thank you. His Excellency, the Governor of Kaduna State and the Chief Host for on this occasion, His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, permit me to breach the rest of the protocol for to respect time. Let me say this, that until moments ago, I did not realize that I will be requested to wear a very heavy shoe. Wear a heavy shoe is to make a few remarks on behalf of the great personalities that have been so recognized with these deserving awards. At this very great occasion, celebrating the golden jubilee of 50 years of the existence of an institution that runs ahead of others, symbolizing what represents the northern part of Nigeria over time. The Historical Research and Documentation Center, otherwise the Arewa House here in Kaduna. Ordinarily, like I said, I wonder how I could have been asked. It's for that reason I feel humbled that by age or otherwise, I did not expect I will be asked to do so. And I recognize that some of the greatest names that have not only served Northern Nigeria, but I had the vision of establishing this institution to document those things that the North represents, have been so recognized and honored. Many of them that when we were in ABU's area, and they mentioned their names, we wanted to know more about them. Today, we have heard their names, and it's such a great privilege that one or two of them are alive here. The Wazir Fika, Baba, as I love to call him always, that is with us here. It speaks volume about the essence of this gathering. And uh, for His Excellency, the Governor of Kaduna State, that made opening remarks earlier, and touched on key issues that represent the essence and the future, not just of the North, but of Nigeria. But particularly, the guest speaker, His Excellency, the Governor of Ekiti State, a man that I knew more in the past in civil society struggle to make Nigeria greater. We had what I consider as one of the greatest lectures that represents hope for our country coming from him today. It could not have been better. And I take note of one thing, that of the former directors of this center, is a colleague of mine, I love to call him colleague, Dr. Modibo, the Executive Secretary of UBEC, that has been honored today. And those great guys that have met the Arewa House, what it is. I want to appreciate the organizers. And uh, it's only appropriate that I specifically appreciate the Vice Chancellor of the Amadou Bello University, Professor Kabiru Bala, a man that over the few months that he came into ABU, I told him, and it's a fact, that he represents a new hope for ABU's area. He's done many things that are unique. And I am confident that if he continues, just as we have seen of His Excellency, the Governor of Kaduna State, we, is, we jokingly say, he's a man that does not fear to try to stand on feet if the right thing has to be done. And for that reason, the facts are out there that he is gradually, physically, and in all parameters of assessment, changing Kaduna City and Kaduna State. His Excellency Governor Erupai.
we, I want to appreciate the fact that we have many governors of the North that I do not have to call them because they have been properly recognized. And I want to say one thing, that I'm proud to be associated with the psyche of the new generation of governors in the North that are investing massively on education. Today, I intend to, later in the day, speak up the issue of access. That is what represents the future of the North. And I want to appreciate the governors that are increasingly investing more on education. We look forward to a situation where the North would outpace itself and join the best setters and therefore create opportunity for our youth and those that are to take over from us to lead the knowledge economy that represents the future of Nigeria and the world. Thank you for the opportunity. God bless you and God bless Nigeria. What is Yes, that is a piece of him, piece from first, uh, Professor Suleiman Elias Bagoro. He's going to be here later and open up, that is at 3 p.m. later in the day, and open up as speaker at, during that particular session. But meanwhile, let me quickly recognize and welcome Abdelkader A. Abba, Registrar, Federal Polytechnic Ida, representing Rector Dr. Didi Baba. And also, Ambassador Abdullahi Atta, OFR MNI, first Nigerian ambassador to Canada. You are all humbly welcome to this particular occasion. And now, to session to hear from the reputable and distinguished personalities here, Elder Statement is going to speak on behalf of the elders. It's a single honor and privilege best for me to call on Madam Tonkoya Kasei to come and speak on behalf of the elders. Please, a very big round of applause for 19 plus elder men. 19 plus years at this particular moment. You are welcome, sir. Mr. Chairman, Your Royal Highness, Mr. Sultan of Sokoto, Your Eminent, I'm sorry. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I wish to, on behalf of the elders present and those who are not present, express our gratitude and appreciation to Arewa House because Arewa House is the driving uh, power that gave Arewa place of honor to education. Our main problem are illiteracy and poverty. By providing books, education for our children, I would like to request that our governors should also direct their attention to the issue of empowerment. The great thing that God has given to North and Nigeria are two things, territory and population. I hope that our governors with their colleagues who are not present, will give agriculture a place it deserves so that our people will be empowered because with the development of agriculture, we can see that recently we are now able not to import rice to Nigeria. We are able to produce rice for our consumption. If we can also turn our attention to other areas, we'll be able to stop importation of many things and save the foreign exchange for the development of the North and Nigeria. I thank you very much for honoring me to speak on behalf of my colleague, 
And I hope that uh, in the next five years, I will also be able to come here and join uh, the celebration along with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please, another big round of applause for a rare dream among us who is over 90 years as we wish him more good health and prosperity. Another big round of applause for Alhaji Tankoy Akasi. Uh, permit me to quickly recognize the presence of uh, Mrs. Monica Shainyo, Director, Benue State Council for Arts and Culture, representing the Honorable Commissioner of Information, Culture and Tourism, Benue State. That is all, and also Right Honorable Nguam Indigi. Well, among the people who were and served Sardona assiduously during his time, one is still alive and uh, had been called upon, my attention is called upon, with the permission of the chairman of this particular occasion, to ask Alhaji Sain one minute, to stand over there for one minute for a very big applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. Now for goodwill message that will come on behalf of the governors here present and the rest of them who are from the northern region. Permit me to call on His Excellency, the Right Honorable Aminu Chambol, who is making Mamuto Lesokto, to come and speak over here. He is the Vice Chairman, Governors Forum of Nigeria. Please, a very big round of applause because we all have the proper representation of all the governors in Nigeria. Sir, Megirma Mutoli. Your Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari, ably represented, former Vice President and Chairman of this occasion, my colleagues, governors of Kaduna, Ikiti, Jigawa, and Kebi State, Your Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, Honorable Ministers here present, distinguished statesmen, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you all. On behalf of the Chairman, of Northern Governors Forum and Governor of Plateau State, who is unavoidably absent. We, governors of Northern Nigeria, do commend the management and staff of Ario House and indeed Amadibele University for not only organizing this event, but for keeping the flag flying by way of ensuring that Ariwa House remains effective, remains and serve the purpose it was established for of collating our historical past, documenting same and coming up with suggestions and ways for a better Nigeria and for a better North. We remain resolute and committed to all of those ideals of good governance, rule of law, and democracy that Ahmadu Bello and his colleagues stood for. And we give our commitment to the people of northern Nigeria and indeed Nigeria that we shall continue to do our best as governors of the United States in the north in ensuring that will create a enabling environment for better education, for better infrastructure, job creation, and entrepreneurship in northern Nigeria. I would like to, on behalf of my colleagues, call on Ariel House to commission a study on NSAS 
and let us have a report on that. We are committed to ensuring that we fund that, uh, that study and we want you to commission also a study on youth engagement and youth development, in particular job creation and entrepreneurship in northern Nigeria. We are ready to fund that uh, research and we are going to, by the grace of God, implement whatever is the outcome of that research and your recommendation. Once again, we thank you very much for all that you have been doing on our behalf and on behalf of the good people of northern Nigeria and Nigeria in general. God bless you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. God bless you too, sir. Please, another big round of applause for the elected governor of Sokoto State who has said it all. And uh, at that particular moment, in every beginning, there must be an end. As we are gradually winding up, um, may I seek the permission of the chairman Mr. Chairman, sir. Uh, permit me to call on the incumbent director, Reals, Dr. Shaib Mushehu Ali, to deliver the vote of thanks. Please, did I hear another big round of applause for a successful story and successful event? Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa I want to stand on the existing protocol uh, by sincerely extending our felt gratitude to all those who find time to attend this very occasion. In particular, we want to thank the, their excellencies, the people from us that have found time to attend this very important occasion of celebrating our 50 years of existence. I also want to express our appreciation to the chairman who, despite the short notice, was able to accept our invitation to chair this occasion. We're really very grateful. We also want to extend our gratitude to His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, for finding time to, us, to, to attend this occasion. I want to sincerely also thank his, uh, uh, the Governor of the United States, Marlon Nazar Erupai, who indeed supported us in many respects, particularly by improving the police system of museum. We are highly grateful, sir. And he has also accepted to assist Arias on the integration process. And we are very, very grateful for that, yes, sir. Uh, the Senate President is not here with us, but we have to thank the Senate President for assisting us toward hosting this very important occasion. We also want to extend our gratitude to the governor of uh, Socrates State, uh, because he has really, really rendered a lot of attention to us, particularly on the issue of preservation and conservation of our ancient historical heritage. I will not end my thanks without mentioning some other corporate bodies and organizations. In particular, I want to thank the guest speaker, His Excellency, the Governor of the State, who accepted and honored us to come here from far away from Ekiti to deliver this anniversary uh, uh, lecture. We also want to extend our gratitude to Malay uh, Professor Elias Ogoro, who also accepted to honor and uh, uh, deliver the next session lecture. We are very grateful. I would also like to extend our appreciation to the following individuals. In particular, uh, Dr. Hamil Boboy, who indeed we drive a lot of inspiration, support, and encouragement. And he was very instrumental to most of the success we have recorded in this event. We also want to mention uh, and recognize the support of Professor Mamouri Akubu, the INEC chairman, who indeed actually support us in so many other respects for the success of not only this event, in so many other respects. We also want to acknowledge the support of Professor Kassar Abba, Dr. Osman Bogaji, who indeed actually is with us in so many other uh, activities we have conducted. We are extremely very grateful to all other participants that were here that attended this function. A word is not enough to express our gratitude. We are extremely grateful. Time will not permit us to mention each and every one, but I would like also to acknowledge the assistance and support of the current Minister of Water Resources, who indeed 
improving the support and assistance, he was able to shift and finance the shifting of a huge collection of Professor Whitaker, which actually added value to our collection and library. We are extremely very grateful, honorable. And we also want to thank the, all the encourage of the people of the state who travel far away from the city to our house. We are extremely very grateful on that, this kind of yes, sir. We also want to thank Mana Amir Allah, indeed, who has volunteered to sing a song for Aria House. We are very grateful, Amir Allah, for that. And all other, and this Aria House will not succeed without the ample support and cooperation of the Vice Chancellor. We really want to register our uh, profound gratitude to the Vice Chancellor for the support and the cooperation he has given to us, which enabled us to achieve this success. Also, the last one is indeed the chairman of council, uh, Mala Vika. Mala Vika is not only a father, he is a mentor. We derive a lot from his fountain of knowledge, which indeed actually assists us greatly in shaping almost all what we are doing in our house. Indeed, Mala Vika is part of the place of house. He has a permanent seat in our library, and we have to uh, actually extend our profound gratitude to Mala Vika. And all others, Mala John Koya Kwasei, who also, despite the short notice, was able to attend. And his right honorable speaker, former speaker, Yaku Dogara, he only received the invitation just two days ago, but he was able to make this invitation. We are extremely very grateful. Well, we are very grateful. Uh, on this note, I also thanks the management and staff of Ari House, who, in spite, committed their time and dedication to ensure the success. I will also like to thank the press, particularly the BBC service. The BBC service has done a lot to us by actually devoting and committing their time to actually enhance the publicity of this occasion. And also all other medias, the KSMC, FRCN, NTA, and so many uh, Liberty, and so many other freedom radio, uh, TVC channels, they are all very supportive and also uh, very trust. We are extremely very grateful. Thank you very much. And I wish everyone success back to his destination. Thank you. Please, another big round of applause for him. And uh, immediately after the national anthem, there will be opening of a special exhibition and tour to the official residence of the late premier to be laid by the vice chancellor of the University, uh, Professor Kadirbala. And uh, now, for the closing prayer, we are going to call. As a political to state governor, Onusoga David JP, please come over and Onusoga David JP. Thank you very much. I can see him coming. Yes, yes. Very active. I know you learn from your own governor who is also active. Historia gallantly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, we thank you. We glorify your name. Father, we exalt your name. Father, we bless your name. Father, I say for thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for it, for you are bringing about a new Nigeria. Uh, Father, we thank you that it's going to be done by your grace in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that Nigeria will take its rightful place the committee of nations in jesus mighty name we pray amen and now to dr khalid abubakar from jamaat nasir islam sir dr khalid is coming thank you okay thank you i can see him Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the especially benevolent and exceedingly merciful, we thank you for having 
seen the first segment of this auspicious occasion of our Ariwa house, a place where our values, histories and perspectives are kept. We thank you for all the dignitaries here present. We ask you, O oh Allah, as we began in peace, may we end in peace, and may all our guests go back to their various destinations in peace. We thank you, Allah, for having made us surmount the security challenge of the NSATs, which frightened the very foundation of our security and governance. You made us surround it. May Allah keep our country together. May Allah keep our country together. May Allah keep our country together. May our political leaders continue to provide good governance, which is a panacea for all these problems. May Allah grant them the might and men to be able to discharge their responsibilities. As we disperse, we thank you to protect us all and see us all to our destinations. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahmanir Rahim, Malik Yomitin, Iyakan Abudu, Iyakan Estarim, Idina Sarat al Mustaqim, Sarat al Ladina and Amta Alehim, Rail al Makhubi Alehim, Malapolin, Amin Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzet and Maisifun. وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين may your name O Allah be praised forever and ever Amen Thank you uh, Please I would like to make this particular announcement that uh, the afternoon session will start by 3 please 3 p.m. not 4 as earlier written please let us all reconvene here for the afternoon session and uh, with our kind permission may we all rise for the national anthem. Talifunga Mbaya Allahu 
Ya rambu karabu wala nang aiki Kay munga gama katara mayu Erumbu maada nar talifai Are waha usmai alfarma Are waha usta chaskanchi Aiki da talifun yambaya Nsira amantaka ayaradaka Dada su Indonesia by Sadamna Sokoto, who is the Kaduna Tetran. But unfortunately, the Tetran in Nigeria are dying. Tetran in the north are dying. Look at uh, the before, there are about uh, more than 12 Tetran in Kaduna alone. Today, there's only one that is existing. There, there, there was about 30,000 employees today are about only uh, 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 one, uh, 100 or so. So I think the governments of the North have to seek very seriously to ensure that this industry is revived in order to follow the dream of Samadu Bello and the, this house. The celebration of 50 years should not just end just like that. And, um, so, while the Vice Chancellor of Ahmed Bello University was uh, presenting his welcome address, yes. he did mention some challenges yes. being faced by this house. Yes. What do you think need to be done to enable uh, the center, which is a research center, meet up the yearning and aspiration of the North? In fact, the, the center had to look very vigorously the deterioration uh, condition or what Sadona has established. Look at the N N N NDC today. Where is N NDC? Look at even the uh, Amdara Hotel created uh, long ago. Uh, where is it today? Look at, uh, like I told you, the establishment of industry in, uh, in the north are not adored there again. So this house, this must create a very, very important research center that will look at the downfall of what the donor had done. It, it's, it will be a laughable thing for us. So you see what uh, most of the things the donor had done are no more, or they are dying. This house is very important. It's not only the celebration of 50 years, they must live up to it and must make sure that all these are uh, uh, developed and the dream of Saudana come to reality. So recently we witnessed a, a protest yes. as regards NSAS, which has led to destructions of property and many lives. How do you think these businesses that were ruined through the protest can be divided? I'm very surprised that a peaceful demonstrating and it didn't have to be a, a, a sack a bar. How would the uh, crowd of SARS, which had been answered quickly, to return to this kind of behavior? Uh, I, I press the police and the army for not coming into this scene immediately. You know, if they have come in, that would many lives would have been lost, would have been too bad. How can these people go to destroy the uh, barracks or the post of the police? If they have reacted, Nadina would have been in soup now. So we must commend them first for not reacting quickly. 
But now they're doing the right thing, trying to arrest and make sure that all the people are uh, 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 dealt with according to the law of the country. So how do you revive the businesses being ruined as a result of this protest? This is very, this is very important. From, from democratization to ruining of the economy, most of the economy, most of the thing belong to the perfect people. Going to people's houses to, to take things like that. Eh? The machine that doing of all these things and let care is taken. We are going to be in total blackness and the use empowerment must be encouraged very much in order to make sure that this ruthless activity created will never have occur again. Your name is Fusa. Yeah. Eh? Your name is My name is Sanata Walid Jibrin. Eh? I am the PTP Board of Tashi Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. NDC it take da masakan masakan wato kaduna kaduna tasa ina kaduna tasa okay an kafata a Allah ta dai tara da mun da cita and yo babu koma a wajen akwai masaku wajen 14 a kadun tikin kaduna yan yau nan daya kawai take aiki anadira masaku sun kai 175 ya dungudan 20 kawai suke aiki akwai mutane wannan dubu 300 yau wajen dubu 115 suke aiki ibi a kadunan nan akwai mutane wanda suke aiki a masakun Nigeria wanda sadan raya kaba mutane sun kai dubu 30 yau a kaduna duk masaka da kada yake aiki yanzu wannan ma yawan mutane ba su kai dubu daya ba a yanzu nan to menene za a yi shi yasa wato ina ya ba ma arufai na kokarin sa ibin kafiya fara aikin gona ya zaga masakun nan ta kai shi eh so ina cika ba da kokari ya ga yanda waɗannan a masakun sun dawo sanata do what an man do you go much as a Narewa, but as a donor to do be yen nan a binda up a do a new natiza, a binda up a do a NNTC, a binda up a paru a masaku, a binda up a do a bunna wonder suna da musa up a da as a donor, the Kuana Giranan, the Akasa Karaham Singh, eh? It doesn't suka so suka zona, suka to Nanizu. Mai kyau ai mu namu a arewan mamma mun fasa kan mu yanzu nan ba babu hatin kai a arewan nan ya zaka ce me zai sa a arewan nan yanzu akwai northern elders forum akwai northern elders council akwai arewa consultation forum me zai sa mu dinan ba namu a do a kungiya daya ga inda ya murai suna da ohara ne ohana de ida yanda wannan suna da mutanen yarbawa suna ani ani fere waso mu ba mu tashi sai kaga wannan yana magana wannan yana magana shi yasa wannan dan bai mu ne mu tanta wannan dira a na arewa ya kamata mu hada kan mu idan muka hada kan mu sauran masata suna gane mu kan mu a hade wannan abubuwan ba za su ba yanzu ana an farawa da wannan 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 yan da aka yi na wato aiki yaji yaji aiki na masasa akan sats wanda annan da aka gane 
Allah inawa ni mata mata tamu mutunji iya yeyesugei vuba wote na mota ni sija sopata kuina sukwasi kai. Lumbu maada nere talivaya Are wa haus maya alparwa Are wa haus ta taskanchaya Aiki da talipun hai amba Lumbu maada nere talivaya Are wa haus maya alparwa Are wa haus ta taskanchaya Aiki da talipun hai amba ya Muzika Hey, munga gaman katara mai wumu Erumbu maada nare tali fai Are wa haus mai alifarma Are wa haus ta chaskanche Aiki da tali fungi ambaya Nsira amantaka ayaradaka Dada sugum masoi naka Alwa habu hudanga abudullah Bawan nda waiki nenga wotarka Ali sahabihi na aiko Na aika gaisu wala sambarka Na taashi zanyabanga sambarka Kanta lipumu maya alwarka Are wa hawuz ya wa maisawka Chibi na nazari ya wa chaka Rumbu maada nare talifai Are wa hawuz maya alfarma Are wa hawuz ta chaskanche Daging ari waza king hausa asar dau na baba aji wang hausa aiki day na wabu makusa antas kace shira asarasa tumpila azar kasa ashang hausa sun sanga habun dada ma hausa tungkang zomba turi sasa mun sanga faru daba aku nasa. Muna da Arabi keza larsa Kana ada ajimi na sonsa Rumbu maada nare talifai Are wa haus mai alfarma Are wa haus ta chaskanche Aiki da talifung yambaya Muje ya are wa haus kalo Umaya akwe shuparo kwantushe ya Tengkanga zomba tuhi zakia Munada ala aduwa tuntushia Saka adama lena hariki uo Da aya rumpata uchi tushe Munada ayari ya karabka Haratunga bukutu ya kaitushe Dukumaya bidarsa nanga muatushe Are wa haus nani tushe Rumbu maada nare talifai Muzika